Hello, welcome to Schools Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE students. You can watch this lesson real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or One Spot Media. We also are live on Music 99 and gojamaica.com. If you have questions on today's subject, you can send them in to Television Jamaica's Facebook page or Instagram at television underscore Jamaica. Today's lesson is on communication studies, where we'll be focusing on language and community. I am Colleen Ayton. So, we will be focusing on language and community. And quoting from the Cape Communication Studies Syllabus 2010, page 11, students should be able to identify the salient features of one Creole or Creole-influenced vernacular in their territory or any other territory which make it different from Caribbean Standard English. So students, I know that sometimes when persons ask us, what is the language spoken in Jamaica? Particularly if a foreigner asks that question. Many persons only say standard English. When in truth and in fact, we have Jamaican Creole. And why is it that many persons are not quick to say Jamaican Creole? Because oftentimes we are told that Jamaican Creole, it's not a language, or simply it's bad talking or your chat bad. So we often do not character, categorize Jamaican Creole as a language. So what we'll be learning today is that Creole, Jamaican Creole in particular, is a language. So let's continue. We will be looking at the characteristics or features of English Creole languages in terms of lexicon, phonology, syntax, and grammar. Lexicon. Have you seen that word before? So when we talk about lexicon or lexicon items, we are referring to the vocabulary of a language, the words that make up a language. So let us see what are these lexical items that we can identify in Jamaican Creole. So the first feature we have is African retention. And when we retain something, we actually keep it. So these words that we consider to be African retention are actual words that we use in Creole today, but we can also find them in an African language. And what are some of these words? Niam, pitney. So the pitney them, niam too much. These words we can find in African languages. Our second feature is English words used in non English words. So what are we saying? These words in Creole actually exist in standard English. However, they have a different meaning in Creole as opposed to standard English. Ignorant. We often hear this word, ignorant. And so we know that this means lack of knowledge in standard English. However, when somebody uses this in Creole, it means angry belly that's another one that part of our body so in standard english we use belly meaning that section of our body but quite often when we use it in creole it refers to somebody being pregnant salad that's another one so we go to the market and we want that big tomato and you ask, how much you sell a salad for? That is the Creole meaning of it. Because in standard English, a salad is a dish made, by, made from different vegetables. Compounding. So, what happens when we talk about compounding? 
this is a combination of two words. So we talk about yai water, meaning crying. And you'll notice that the other examples refer to body parts. And this is common to compound body parts in Creole. So we speak about our hand miggle, belly bottom. We talk about our neck back. And we could continue. Another such feature is called reduplication. And when we reduplicate, what we actually do is that we repeat the root word. So, Freddy, Freddy, that is somebody who is very afraid of almost any and everything. Girly, girly. So we tend to call males who are quite effeminate, girly, girly, right? Fenke, fenke. This one means you're so weak. So, let us look at this activity and let us put what we have learned into practice. Read the passages below and identify the different Creole lexical features. Number one. The picnic then they are yard, you know, and some of them just licky licky, craven, and yam everything them see. Number two. Altia always sicky sicky. She have one dry cough since Thursday. You see when she cough, all yeah water come and all see me belly button bun me. She always thinky thinky and dark from me noir. So start thinking, start working this out students and let us see if you have found those Creole lexical items. Are we ready? So let us look at our key. It's color coded. So reduplication should be licky, licky. African retention, pitney, and niam. English words with Creole meaning, so craven and dark, these have different meanings in standard English as opposed to Creole. And lastly, compounding. We should I have identified dry cough, yai water, and belly bottom. School's not out continues after this break. Stay with us. Go have some water. and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during, and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, along with TVJ, present Schools Not Out, CSEC and CAPE Lessons, live Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, with weekly Schools Not Out tutorial sessions on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Schools Not Out, live CSEC and CAPE Lessons, here on TVJ. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick 
by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing, when caring for the sick, before, during, and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, along with TVJ, present Schools Not Out, CSEC and CAPE Lessons, live Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, with weekly Schools Not Out tutorial sessions on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Schools Not Out, live CSEC and CAPE Lessons, here on TVJ. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during, and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, along with TVJ, present Schools Not Out, CSEC and CAPE Lessons, live Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, with weekly Schools Not Out tutorial sessions on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Schools Not Out, live CSEC and CAPE Lessons, here on TVJ. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during, and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, along with TVJ, present Schools Not Out, CSEC and CAPE Lessons, live Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, with weekly Schools Not Out tutorial sessions on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Schools Not Out, live CSEC and CAPE Lessons, here on TVJ. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during, and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, along with TVJ. Welcome back to Schools Not Out, where we are discussing communication studies, language and community. So before our break, we looked at the lexicon items. And remember students, we could add more meaning to some of these words 
in Creole. We're going to continue and we're going to be looking on phonology. Mm. So when we hear the word phonology, what word comes to your mind? I would imagine phonics. And when we talk about phonics, we are talking about the sound. So when we talk about phonology, we are referring to the sound system of a language. What are the phonological features that we can find in English Creoles? The first one on your screen reads devoiced consonant clusters. So reminding you what are consonants, those letters that are not, those letters that are not um, vowels, right? So we have child, C-H-I-L-D. So the L and the D at the end, that is our consonant cluster. Debbie have one girl child last night. So we notice that the D at the end drops off. It's devoiced. Wind, N-D. So we have that consonant cluster at the end. We will realize that the D is no longer there. Last, L-A-S-T. This is the last time I talk to you. So we lose the T. The second feature is loss of initial unstressed syllable. So when we are looking at this feature, the word would have to have at least two syllables. And initial means first. So what happens here is that the first syllable is removed. So because me now come, ka me tired. Advantage becomes vantage. Me no want nobody take vantage of me. The third one is insertion of a vowel between the consonants S, M, and S, N. Look at these now. Snake. Me see one snake in the bush. Small. We insert the U. La, this is too small. Can you think of any other one like this? Alteration of V sound to B in some words. Let me just say this, students. Some of these words, depending on our geographical location, you may or may not put in the B. So shove. When somebody pushes you, you are quick to say, no, shove me. We also have never. Me never see this from me barn. So the V is replaced with the B. This one may be a little bit strange, but yes, we have persons who actually put the B in the V when we are speaking to river. Minago river later. And every becomes every. Everybody know that. Continuing with our features. TH is often replaced with the D sound. So with becomes with. Minago with you. That becomes that. You don't know that. The ER and the OR at the end of some words are replaced with the letter A. So finger becomes finger. And doctor becomes doctor. Me not go doctor later, although my finger hurt me. The TT is sometimes replaced with K. And sometimes the word may have just one T and it is replaced with the K sound. So little becomes little. And bottle, for instance, becomes buckle. Don't broke the buckle, this too little. The dropping of the eighth sound from some words. So in this feature, students, the H is actually on the word in standard English. However, when we are pronouncing these words in Creole, we drop the H. So hard becomes hard. Your two hard ears. And hair becomes ear. You know, hear what we say. Then we have the opposite. In this case now, students, the H. The H 
is not on the word, but in pronouncing them, we add the H. So listen to me now. Egg. What did you have this morning? Egg. And we have pronounced the H. Okay? You don't like hockey. So this is another feature. Remember, in some instances, the H is added. In other instances, the H is missing. Let's get ready to work. Activity. Read the sentences below and identify the different Creole phonological features. Number one. Mr. Simit, my English teacher, always has a heap of work for whip and computer. Number two. Me no bother do all of the work every day. Just little, call me tired. Number three. The last time him send, me just left and go river, go bed. Let's get busy, students. We are looking for the phonological features. Let's go. Identify them. So are we ready for the reveal? Let's look at our key. We have the devoiced consonant cluster. Just to remind you, this one, the consonants are at the end and one would be missing. So we have sen. Send becomes sen. We have just in number two. Just becomes just. Number three, last becomes last. Sen again and we have just again and the last one. And we have lost the D. The second one, and that's in red, loss of initial unstressed syllables. Syllab syllables. Sorry. So we have the first syllable of the word being dropped. So in number two, because is reduced to car. In pink, Insertion of a vowel between the consonants S, M, and S, N. And this is a frequent one we hear. Simit. So persons whose name, surname is Smith, is commonly pronounced as Simit. Then we have alteration of the V sound to B in some words. We have river in number three being pronounced as riba. The TH being reduced to a D, that's in blue. So we have in number two, the reduced to D and bed. The TH is replaced with D. ER and the OR being replaced with A. Let's look for those purple. Mr. becomes Missa. Teacher becomes teacher and computer becomes computer the double t replaced by the k we have one such example little instead of little the dropping of the eight sound from some words we have one example in number one heap so the h is missing and the adding of the eight sound to hallways and hall of the work. Okay, so that's it for phonology. Syntax. When you hear the word syntax, what are we talking about? So syntax refers to the sentence structure of a language. Let us see what Creole has for us. And remember students, these are the features of Creole that makes it a language. So we don't want to hear about any bad talking or bad English. So the syntactic features, serial verb construction. And a series tend to be a list, all right? And in this case, we're having a list of verbs. Run, come carry this goggy, Stacy. Talk to me. Run, come, carry, go, gi. 
This is a total of five verbs, and notice they are in close proximity to each other. And there's a common one that we have as a proverb. proverb. Carry go bring come. Sentence focus. Now what happens in sentence focus is that the word that we want to emphasize, we put it closer to the beginning of the sentence and in addition to putting it close to the beginning of the sentence, we use our stress and our intonation to give meaning. So let us look at the first sentence. I eat, you are eat me mango. The focus is on eat. You cannot believe that you simply told the person to put down the mango and instead they have chosen to eat the mango. I mean mango you eat? I don't believe that out of all the fruits you have chosen to eat my mango. So the focus there is on mango. A parlor eat me mango? I am quite appalled. That out of everybody who should have eaten something for me, Paul has chosen to eat my mango. And I'm just reminding you students that this would follow the stress and the intonation. So let us go to work. Read the sentences below and identify the different Creole syntactic features. Number one, him send go shop to buy sugar. Number two, I sneeze, you sneeze for me. Number three, I mash a cough a while ago. Are you, have you made note of your answers as yet? Let us see, let us see. Definitely, we have a serial verb construction. Im, sen, go, shop, fi, buy, sugar. We have three, sen, go, buy. Then we have sentence focus. A sneeze, you sneeze, pa me. How could you in a time like this? Three, a marsha, cough a while ago. Can you believe? In this season, at this time, Marsha has chosen to cough. So these should be your answers. We're go coming to our fourth element, grammar. And we know that when we speak about grammar, we are talking about the rules that govern a language. So what are these rules that govern the Creole? Now, you will notice SJE, and that is Standard Jamaican English, and wherever you see JC, that refers to Jamaican Creole. Let's go through these grammatical features. The past tense marker. We know students that in Standard English, for regular verbs, we simply add E D. So how do we do this now in Creole? Do we actually have a past tense marker? We definitely have one. So in Creole, our past tense marker is, and we have a variety to choose from, did, n, when, and ben. And again, this depends on your location your ge geographical location. So people tend to say, Lord, a country and come from, if it is not the one that we regularly use. So let us see how it works. I stayed home all week. Most of us would say, me did stay home or worst case scenario, me did turn on my yard. But some persons may say, me ain't stay home this week. Me when stay home this week, or simply me been tana me yard this week. That's past tense marker. Plural marker. Do we have a plural marker in Creole? Yes, we do. So in standard English students, again, we show 
that a word is plural by adding s and this is for regular nouns good what happens in creole we simply use the word them and this is not attached to the noun the students are working from home what does this equate to and we are focusing on plural students the picnic them a walk at them yard so on this screen students we are seeing the did for the past tense and the them for the plural am i convincing you that creole is a language let us see what comes on the other slide present tense marker so for the third person in standard english we would add s she drinks milk he drinks milk how do we do this in creole so in creole the verb remains the same me drink you drink him drink she drink we drink nothing is added to the verb let's continue possession marker and this has to do with ownership in standard english we simply add the apostrophe s to show ownership can we do this in creole oh yes now what happens in creole we use the word see so this is sam's bag i see sam bag that or sometimes we eliminate the fee and it is simply a sam bag that and you know don't touch it then we have future marker something to come so in standard english we use the word will to indicate the future tense can we do this in creole oh yes we can so in creole we use we go or we ago all right or go or ago i will go to the market becomes me we go or me ago market last slide on grammatical features the copula verb construction and sometimes we forget what the copula is it is derived from the verb to be in jamaican creole there is no copula so i am happy becomes me happy david is sick becomes david sick gender distinction and i think maybe some of you may be saying really miss do we speak like this yes some of us for the gender dis distinction so in standard english we use the pronouns him and he to show male for female we use him or her so in some places students and we hear this occasionally whether it's male female or neuter we simply say him so francine had a baby last night yes it's a female she's a female but what does it equate to in creole for some persons him have baby last night for the neuter a cow does not know the use of its tail until it is lost how do we do this in creole cow no know the use of him tail till him lose it all right so now that we have looked at some of the rules some of the rules for grammar in creole let us look at this activity read the conversation below and identify the different creole lexical features and that should be grammatical features sorry juba juba you see keisha me did left her and her friend them down a rosy house i may not see her when we go back there kevin no me not see him but me her same did down a shot not too long now juba she walk up and down too much you know I fear money them the thief the other day. Kevin, you have something for him? Oh, yeah, on him so. Juba? Yeah, but me with gear when me see her. Take care. 
Do we understand the conversation? Now let us see if we can identify those grammatical features. Past tense marker. So this is something happening ha that has happened. We have me did, him did, them did. So the word did showing past tense. Gender distinction. So it's clear that Juba is looking for Keisha. However, Kevin refers to Keisha as him. Future marker. We, and that's in the last utterance of Juba, Juba, but me, we. Plural marker. That's in blue. Friend, them. And possession in purple. Fi her money, fi him. Now we are coming to a activity and I have here our final activity. I'm going to need you, I'm going to ask you to follow with me. It's a poem that I will read. And in reading, since it will be projected on your screen, while I'm reading it, you can actually start writing your answers. And what do I want you to look for? I want you to look for one lexical feature, one phonological feature, one syntactic feature, one grammatical feature. And let's look at number five. Comment on the appropriateness of the use of language in the poem based on the context. So, as I read, Start looking for your answers. Now you think that is right, sir? Talk the truth. The man was my friend. I build it. I build the house that him live in. But now that him dead, that maga football in son, come say him want a nice job for the coffee. So him give it to Mr. Bell Nevis to make. That big belly crook who don't know from a chisel. But because him is big shot, because him make big shot kafu, see him kafu must better than mine. Boy, it hurt me. It hurt me for true. Fix your next one, Miss Fergie. That man could have knocked back in waters, you know, sir. I remember the day in the said same bar. When him drink all brown and coxing into the ground, then stand up straight as a plumb line and kill him felt hat on his head and walk home cool, cool, cool. Them was water bird, brother. Funeral? Me, sir? That boy have to learn that a man having pride. But, bless me days. Good enough to build the house that him live in. But not good enough to make him coffin. I would not do it for nothing. For nothing. That man was my friend. Maga boy. His university turned him fool. I tell you, it burned me. It burned me for true. And that's the carpenter's complaint by Edward Ball. I am really hoping, students, that you have your answers ready. One lexical feature, one phonological feature, one grammatical feature, one syntactic feature. So, let us look on the answers. In red, we have lexicon. In green, we have phonology. In purple, we have syntax. In blue, we have grammar. So, the lexicon, we have maga. And we know anybody that we classify as maga, we can just imagine how thin he or she is. We have hot from hot me. Now, it's important, hot, so let me just talk, hot me and burn, burn. You should have realized, students, that these words are actually 
English words. They spell that way. They are actually English words. But what you should also you should have also noticed that they are not used in the regular English way. So they are used in Creole. Hot me, bon me. I'm quite annoyed. I'm upset. Can you believe that this man, this son, didn't allow me to build his father's coffin? We have not back and we have said same. And these are examples of um, compounding. Then we have in green phonology. And we have boy becoming boy. We have next. Well, it's, it's, it's next, but we know that the T is missing. And we have dem, the TH, instead, uh, the D instead of the TH. And nothing, the TH is missing. Then we have in purple, the syntax. And the example there would be the serial verb construction. Come, say, want. And in blue, again, we have him. So my friend, first of all, would be my. Then we have him dead, him son, him is, him felt hot. So these are actual English words, but they are not used in the correct, as the correct pronoun, not used as how we would use them in standard English as the pronouns he or his. So let us look at questions and answer number five. We were asked to comment on the appropriateness of the use of language in the poem based on the context. So first of all, appropriate. What do we mean by appropriateness? How does it suit? How does the language suit the context? So we are seeing a mixture of standard English and more, we can say maybe predominantly Creole. That's the language. So we have a mixture. And maybe you are used to that word mesolet. So we are seeing maybe the mesolet. You should know that word. That's a mixture of the standard English and Creole. And context, this is where. And please, tell me now, where is the context of this poem? Remember, he spoke about Miss Fergie fixing him another one, drinking, where? So you should realize by now that he is in a bar. So I'm asking you, how does the language suit the context? Now, we know the stereotypical view, students, is that many persons are quick to say persons speak standard English because of where they live, what type of job they do, and the list continues. We should have realized from this poem that the persona is a carpenter. So the stereotypical view, is that okay? This is a carpenter. Mm. The only thing he knows is Creole. But remember, students, while many persons share this view, it is not necessarily so. It is just something that persons say. But we have persons in varying back from various backgrounds, live at various places, do various jobs. And it doesn't dictate that they speak the Creole over the standard English. So what would say here is that the stereotypical view is that persons in this social class or a carpenter is expected to be speaking Creole. However, this is not to say that there are not persons who are carpenters who do not speak the standard language. Also, the context. Remember, this man is in a bar. It's an informal context. Small talk. And to intensify that, remember he's quite annoyed, quite disturbed that his friend's son refused, denied him the opportunity to build the coffin. And ironically, he built his house. So this got him very upset. And maybe he thought to himself, the best way we all know when we are upset, some of us 
if we are not speaking Creole, we do not feel as if the language, if what we are saying will actually go across. So we are saying the language is appropriate, bearing in mind that he is in a bar, he's in an informal context. So we are recapping. You have learned, or I've reminded you rather, about four key areas that we can look at when we want to prove, when we want to justify that, guess what? Creole is a language. So remember, students, when we talk about lexicon, we are talking about vocabulary. And you are not seeing, on the, seeing it on the screen now, but remind me of some of the vocabulary or the lexical items you should be thinking of. The R1, reduplication. C, can you remember that one? Compounding, just to name a few. African retention, all right? English words with a different meaning in Creole. Then we talk about syntax. And when we talk about syntax, we are talking about sentence construction. So you should quickly remember what we call sentence focus. And when we are talking about sentence focus, we are talking about where we put the word that we want to emphasize at the front of the sentence. And we use stress and intonation to emphasize that word and we have serial verb construction and that's where we have a series a list of verbs in close proximity to each other and we can re remember one quickly carry go bring come phonology our sound system so mr simit and we have inserted a vowel between the s and the m we now know students, or we are reminded that we have, we can, we have, the dem is used to show plural, did to show past tense. And for grammar, we have a number of different rules that, well, I think did would go under grammar and dem would go under grammar, right? Um, as we come to the close of this lesson, please be reminded students that you should be able to identify all of these features in a passage, in a sentence that is given to you. We also should be thinking differently of how we view Creole in general because you should know by now that Creole is a language and just like how we can find these different features in standard English, we can find them in Creole. So I don't want to hear anybody talking about bad talking or bad language or you can't chat better because we are knowing now that Creole is a language. It is the context. It is the context that dictates when we use one over the other. I wish you all the best in your exams. Please use the time to study. Please use the time to recap, practice your past papers, and all the best students. All the best. That's all for today for Communication Studies. I hope you grasp some of the points we discuss. You can catch a repeat of today's lesson on JNN Today at 4 p.m. and in the school's Not Out Highlights on Saturday between 1 and 4 p.m. right here on TVJ. It also will be on video on demand on One Spot Media. Until next time, take care.